Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video we will be walking you through the construction of the foundation for a four bedroom house in East Legon. This house comes with a dining and study room along with a second reception area on the first floor. Before we begin, I want to state that the quality of this video may vary. This is because some of the footage was captured on low quality cameras. The first thing we had to figure out was where the land was located. Once we located the land, we conducted a survey to know what type of grounds we were dealing with. After our survey, we were able to determine that we were building on wetland. By knowing this piece of information, we were able to know what type of engineering would be best suited for this particular area. With our survey done, we were ready to set out and begin the building process. When we say setting out, what we truly mean is transferring our measurements from our architectural drawings onto the ground. Now this helps us determine our boundaries, columns, walls and rooms. So before any building begins, you have to set out. The first thing we did after setting out was to begin excavation. With the excavation, what we are basically doing is we are removing the, the topsoil and digging a few feet down. So we're basically taking out the topsoil while digging a few feet down. As you can see in this shot, we started installing the column beams and bases. Now under normal circumstances, what we would do is we would do all the excavation and then once we're done with the excavation, we fix all our beams and bases. But because we're dealing with wetland, anytime we excavate one side, we realize that by the time we come back to it, that side is filled with water. So we excavate one side and then we fix the columns in there. Now this helped us work faster and also helped us work smart. Now the concrete mixer is on site and so we started mixing the concrete to cast for the beams and the foundation of the beams and the bases. As I stated earlier, this area is waterlogged. So there are days when we had to pump a lot of water out. In this instance, we use a centrifugal water pump to pump out all the water from the ground. On especially bad days, we have to pump a lot of water before the work actually begins. There are days where the pump needs to be on site, pumping water as work is ongoing. This was one of the major challenges that we faced when working on this particular project. We've now reached the stage where we lay blocks 
for the substructure. As you can also see, we have also begun the formwork for the columns. Now that we are done with the casting of our columns, we now move to the ground beams. What you see in the video now is the steel benders preparing the reinforcements for the ground beams. While the steel benders prepare the reinforcement, the carpenters also wrap up on the formwork for the ground beams. With all the steel and formwork done, we proceed to cast the concrete for the ground beam. Now you may be wondering well, why we are casting the ground beam. So it's going to be the hook or the, or the platform that we're going to use to hold our pre-stressed beams once we get to that stage. With the concrete now done, we proceed to install the pre-stressed beams and blocks. The concrete beams are first installed on top of the ground beams and once the beams are in place, we start fixing the blocks in between the beams as you can see in the video. This process is repeated for all the areas except where the garage is going to be. Now the reason why we left the garage open and did not use the pre-stressed beams for, those, for that particular area is because we were, it's very difficult to determine what type of car your clients will park there. So for that, in, for that reason, we decided to leave that place bare and then do the proper filling of that place and casting of that area. Now that the beams and blocks have been installed, it's now time to cast the foundation. With the installation of the beams and the blocks done, we now proceed to cast our foundation. For this, we're using concrete with thickness of 2 inches. It would have been a lot more had we decided to just go with the traditional methods of excavation, filling, compacting, and then casting. Then with that, we would have had to use a lot more concrete. But because we resorted to using the pre-stressed beams, the thickness of the concrete is much smaller. In the video you can see that we are now filling the garage with laterite. While the filling is ongoing, 
you can also see that casting continues for the front of the building. After compacting, we proceeded to cast the concrete for the garage. Now that we are done with the casting, this is what the foundation looks like now. The next video in this series will see us continue to the first floor. And this brings us to the end of today's video. If you have any questions concerning the processes or procedure that was used in the creation of this foundation, you can shoot us a question in the comment section below. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.